Alright guys, today I want to talk about hedgehog care and a little bit of things you should know before you buy a hedgehog. So if you're thinking about getting a hedgehog, watch this video fully. I have my five-year-old female hedgehog here named Jasmine. She was born in my house. I've actually owned over 40 hedgehogs in my life. So I've had a lot of hedgehogs. I've bred a lot and kept a lot. So I'm going to go over some of the main things you should know if you buy a hedgehog. First off, with any pet, especially hedgehogs, which are naturally kind of scared animals, uh, they'll often go into a ball, which she's not doing because I've had her for a long time. But they'll often go into a ball. It can be hard to hold them. Even when they're a young hedgehog, she was never mean, she never balled up, she never bit or anything like that. I've actually never been bitten by any of my hedgehogs, but some people say they do get bit by their hedgehogs, so it can happen. But what I'm trying to say is with any small pet, make sure to buy one that's tame when you buy it. Think about it like this, would you buy a dog that bites you? Probably not. But I get people all the time saying that they have a hedgehog that bites them or that they can't hold because it's too scared and mean. Or they have a bird that bites them and they just got the bird a week ago. Why did you buy it? All you're doing is making it easier for these bad breeders to sell these pets even though they're not of high quality. So you're just making these breeders able to keep breeding these low quality pets. So make sure that you find a hedgehog that is tame. They, they do have a natural response. As you can see she's kind of hissing. You might not be able to hear her. But you should be able to pick them up and have them not roll into a ball. As you can see, she's not in the ball, her head's staying out, and she's very easy to handle. This is how she's been since she was a month old or less. I, I held them since they were about a week and a half, two weeks old. Very calm, very nice and easy. For these guys, they're very, very easy to care for, actually. And if you have a nice one like this, it makes it all the better, because you can actually take them out and hold them. They're very easy to care for. You need a cage that's about four foot uh, squared for the ground. You do not want any levels in your cage. They are very clumsy and they're prone to falling off. So a single level cage is all you want. You can use a guinea pig type cage. Those are perfect for them. Or you can even use a big tub, a uh, clear tub. Uh, that's what I use for lots of my pets, especially my hedgehogs. Get as big of ground space as you can, but again, no levels. So get as big a cage as you can with a single level. In their cage, I recommend using Aspen. I've used it for years uh, with lots of different types of pets, but for hedgehogs especially, I've used it for years. Do not use pine or cedar. They can be bad for hedgehogs and many other types of pets. Never use pine or cedar. They're less expensive than Aspen, but they're also dangerous. Aspen's just a little bit more expensive, but it's safe for your pets. It's a harder wood, so there's less dust and stuff getting up in there. It won't cause respiratory problems like pine and cedar can. So you can use Aspen. You can also use that CareFresh paper bedding, but I find that to be much more expensive. And when you have a lot of pets like I do, that just adds up way too much. So CareFresh, if you have one, is fine. But Aspen, again, I've used it for years, never had a single health problem. It's fairly low cost, especially if you buy the bigger bulk bag. You can get like a big bag that can clean like 10 cages for about 12 bucks at any local pet store. So that's what I usually go with. For food for these guys, 90%, 80% to 90% of the food intake they have, cat food. Now make sure you get a good cat food. Don't go to your local store and buy some junk. You know, that's not going to be good for a cat or a hedgehog. Go and find something that's good. You want a high quality food. Find something that has 35% or higher protein, and the fat you want to be pretty low. Keep it under 20%, preferably under 15%. If you go and get a very good known brand. I'm not talking like, I'm not going to name any brands just because I don't want to. I mean there's lots of known brands out there that aren't very good either. But go find a good high quality food that doesn't have many grains in it. You want the first few ingredients to be some type of meat product. You don't want corn to be the first ingredient. That's horrible for them. So find a good quality cat food. That's going to be, like I said, about 80 to 90 percent of what they eat. Other than that, I keep that in their cage all day. I also have a water bottle, bottle on their cage. Some people say, oh, water bottles are bad. They could break their teeth. I've used water bottles with these guys for five years. And like I said, I've had 40 hedgehogs in my house. And for the past five years, not a single one has had a problem with a water bottle. And I find it much easier. They don't get, you know, they don't walk through it, push bedding into it if it was a water bowl. So it keeps it more sanitary, I think. People sometimes say, oh, water bowls are more sanitary. Well, they might be right when you put them in the cage, but once you get some bedding or poop or they walk through it with their poopy hands, 
it's not sanitary anymore. So I use water bottles and I just change out the water like every four or five days, uh, even if it's not empty. And it works out great. They have no problem drinking from a water bottle and I find that to be the best thing to do. Again on food, let's go back to that. So cat food is going to be the majority of their diet. They are insectivores and they, well I think they're actually um, omnivores or something. They're insectivores mostly though. But I find they don't go after crickets. They don't hunt them down. It's, it's kind of odd. They will eat my mealworms if they're living. Uh, but what I found the simplest thing to do to add in some uh, insects for them, I have a big bag of dried mealworms. These are just freeze dried mealworms, tons of them. You can buy these in bulk. And I just grab a handful and throw it in with their cat food in their dish. You know, probably four times a week I give them some uh, insects. So that's real simple and easy to do. Another thing they should have is some fruits or veggies. Really veggies before fruits. They should have some veggies and maybe some fruits. And you can feed them fresh. For my purposes, I go freeze dried. I got some peas and carrots. And then I got a mixed bag of many types of vegetables here. So like I said, you can go fresh, but for me, I just take, take a little handful of that, put it in with the cat food a few times a week, and it gives them that extra nutrients from that type of food. Other than that, really, cat food and some vegetables, some insects as well, of course. Other than that, and the water dish, all you need in the cage is two more things. You need uh, a wheel. They're going to be active at night. They're going to want to run. You need to give them some, uh, some, uh, Jesus, I can't think of the word, exercise. There we go. You need to give them some exercise or they're just going to be lazy in their cage. They're not going to know what to do. Give them a wheel. It gives them some exercise and some enrichment. And you're going to also need in the cage, let's get on your back. You're going to also need in the cage a sleeping area. They like to sleep inside, hidden somewhere. So you're going to need to provide a sleeping box, a sleeping hide, something. It could be, it could be as easy as a uh, cardboard box that you cut a hole in the side, place it upside down so it's got a roof on it, and then they got somewhere to go and sleep. Really, these guys are not hard once you know how to care for them, especially if you get a nice one like she is. You can take them out and play with them whenever you want. They're not super bonding pets. I mean, she knows who I am, but she's not going to really like run to me and try to get a treat. It's not like a cat or a dog, but they will kind of bond to their owners and know who they are. She definitely knows who I am, and she's a lot calmer with me than, say, some other people that might hold her. So they do get to know who you are, but they're not like a cat or a dog. They're not going to learn tricks, but they're very cool pets. And uh, other than that, like I said, they're very easy to keep. You basically clean out their cage about once a week. I usually clean the bedding out about once a week, otherwise it'll start smelling, of course. So once a week you clean the bedding, and then, you know, every day you check their food and water, but it really only takes a couple minutes to do that. So really simple to keep pets, really great pets, especially if you get a tame one. Let me go back to my first point, never buy an untamed pet. Yes, people think, oh, I can turn it around, I can make it nice. And, you know, you probably could if you spend enough time and, you know, you have enough patience to do so. But you might as well look a little harder and find one that is calm and tame to begin with. That way you bring it home and the relationship between you and your pet can start right away. Rather than having to try to turn around these bad behaviors that it learned from a bad breeder. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about tonight. If you guys have any, uh, have any questions about hedgehogs, just let me know. And I'll get back to you hopefully in the comments pretty quickly. Other than that, happy pet keeping. We'll see you guys later.